All right, there's a couple of things we got to get done today with the GT350, but we're also going to be talking about oil consumption. All right, you guys, so we got the GT350 pulled in, and what we're gonna be doing today is an oil change. I'm gonna be showing you guys a few modifications, and then we're also gonna be discussing the oil consumption on my GT350. So for those of you guys that are new to the channel, we are on a Gen 2 motor now with my 2017 Shelby GT350. My Gen 1 went out at 8,400 miles. I wanted to give you guys some background first on oil consumption on my Gen 1 motor before jumping into the question of how much is my Gen 2 motor consuming in terms of oil thus far. So we have 1,500 miles on the new motor and we also have uh, three track days, two track events, three total track days on the car. That was actually way more than I had on my Gen 1 motor, uh, just to put that out there. But um, my Gen 1 motor was consuming between two and four quarts of oil in the first thousand miles. So it was pretty shocking to see that happen with a brand new car. And if you're familiar with the GT350, there's a lot of controversy about the oil consumption issue and saying that it's normal, it's not normal whatever but even in the owner's manual it states that some oil consumption is normal but it got to the point where people were taking their cars to ford and they would do an oil consumption test they do an oil change essentially and then have you check back in a thousand miles to see how much oil your car is actually consuming now i didn't go through that process i really don't like taking my cars to dealers all right so last look before she gets dropped off I'm sure some of you guys can relate to that. So I said, I'll just drive it. It's under warranty until it breaks. Uh, but I will mention as a disclaimer, I did break this car in properly. Uh, I always let the car warm up and all that stuff because there's always those guys that say, oh, the people that have engine issues, they didn't break their car improperly or they beat on it before it warmed up or whatever. I never did any of that stuff. Um, I take really, really good care of my cars. <laughs> With that said, I did continually top this car off with oil and the oil consumption issue continually got worse and worse. I always made sure the car had oil, but it was consuming a lot of oil toward the end of its lifespan, I will say that. So anyways, uh, I ended up spinning a rod bearing on the car and getting a new motor and Gen 2 is now here. I followed the identical break-in procedure with this car, no changes. The only difference uh, I or only change I made between the two was I did do an oil change at a thousand miles, but honestly that had nothing to do with the issues I had with the Gen 1, simply because I was having oil consumption issues way before that first oil change. So that was really the only variable that changed. The break-in process was the same, no watt pulls until after 100 miles. I waited till about 200 miles on this motor, varying RPMs, all that good stuff. And then in addition to that, uh, no track days until a thousand miles. So. I pretty much hit that thousand mile mark on my way to Sebring. I actually followed, had Ashley follow me with the trailer, or she drove the 350. I followed her with the trailer and I got the additional miles put on the car so that I could make sure I hit that thousand mark before tracking it for the first time with the Gen 2 motor. So fast forwarding to now, uh, once I had 500 miles on this car, I rechecked the oil with the Gen 2 motor and I had zero oil consumption. So that is, really freaking awesome uh fast forward to a thousand miles i did that first oil change obviously checked the oil again at that point before going and replacing it and zero oil consumption now here's where i guess a bigger test came into play right after that thousand miles i did my first track day so i got one day one and a half days on track and then no oil consumption fast forward to a little over a week ago we were at that 1500 mile ish mark and I had two more track days, two total days for one event, and zero oil consumption with a lot of track time. So a couple of 30 minute sessions, a couple of 25 minute sessions on the first day, and then a 30 minute session and a 20 minute session the second day. So a lot of time on the car running it hard, and I can report back and say zero oil consumption, none at all, even on track, which actually surprised me. I expected to use some oil tracking the car as hard as we did. Thank you. 
So this is pretty exciting for me moving forward and gives me a lot more trust uh, with this platform because I do eventually want to tune this car, but I also have an extended powertrain warranty. So that's the balance that I'm facing right now. So Ford gave me an extended powertrain warranty in lieu of all the stuff that happened with my Gen 1 motor at such a low low mileage. So even though this is a really small sample size, I wanted to share it with you guys. I've only had one Gen 1 motor, obviously, and one Gen 2 motor. But um, I've had people ask me, you know, how is the Gen 2 doing in terms of oil consumption? And there it is. I can report back with some very, very good news. Now, uh, also in today's video, we're going to be doing uh, an oil change, but I wanted to mention something. Uh, I have the cartridge style filter on my first Gen 1 motor, and I also had, um, obviously have the cartridge style since it's a Gen 2 motor, but there is a difference that Ford, or a change Ford made to the oil filters for the cartridge style guys, and I would highly recommend that you do change to the newer style filter. Here are the two oil filters right here. We have the new style on the left, which is FL2087, and the old style on the right, which is FL2062. And this has the plastic insert versus the newer metal insert. So one other change is that it's just a one-piece internal design versus a two-piece design where it has a floating plastic piece on the inside, which just seems like a bad idea. And I can attest to actually having issues installing that, wondering if it was seating correctly. Uh, when installing it. So that may sound stupid, but um, this does seem like a lot better solution and there's obviously a reason why Ford changed it. So um, for the canister guys, this doesn't apply to you, but make sure you torque your oil filters on there is all I can say. One other thing I did want to mention is that I'm still using the OEM Motorcraft 5W50 fully synthetic oil and there's a reason for that. I do want to switch to AMS oil, but I've had so much of this left over from my Gen 1 motor that I always kept on hand that I want to go through this first. I could sell it, but I just figured I'd finish this off first. Now there's also a specific reason we're doing an oil change today. Um, we pretty much got our oil temps to a ridiculous level on our, at our last track day, which was between 295 and 300 degrees. So normally I wouldn't be too concerned about changing the oil after a track day, but because the oil temps reach such a high level, it's a no brainer to go ahead and just replace the oil. Uh, there's also uh, Blackstone Laboratories that does oil analysis tests. I really don't want to send my oil out and have that done. I've actually never done it, but that's an option that you guys can do or I could do if I wanted to, if I cared enough to see how the, this oil, the condition of this oil is. So uh, I'm going to get the car up in the air now and get this fluid uh, swapped out. You guys so just like that the car has fresh oil in it 10 quarts ready to go uh, a couple things i did want to mention was i went ahead and replaced the drain plug this time it's the plastic drain plug you can't just get the uh, o-ring but mine was leaking after my last oil change so i kind of regretted not changing it and these are like six bucks so kind of a no-brainer not to change those in the future i may just go ahead and pick up a upr magnetic drain plug and just call it a day but uh, also one thing I wanted to mention was on my initial oil change this is why I did the oil change at a thousand miles my first one was because I wanted to see if there was any metal particles that the filter picked up since it was a brand new engine so this is the second filter came out clean which is good but my first one did have some metal shavings in it it was actually quite a bit uh, so I know there's a debate on whether you need to do that oil change or not well I'm glad I did do my oil change at a thousand miles given how many contaminants were in my initial filter. So that's pretty much going to wrap up today's video. I did want to mention one more thing before we close this out is that this is kind of what my expectations were when I initially got this car and I wanted to make this to show guys that you know are looking at GT350s or have a GT350 that you know you don't you shouldn't necessarily be consuming a bunch of oil. This has been through more abuse even though this is a production built track car in my opinion given that Ford sends you out to track attack to show you what these cars can do. But again, I just wanted to make people aware that not every car is consuming a bunch of oil. And while I know there will be variances from engine to engine, that this should be more, this is more in line with my expectations. And going forward, 
you know, as I continue to track the car, I wouldn't be surprised if I start consuming some oil, but you know, two, three quarts in a thousand miles is just excessive. And then again, mine was getting even worse toward the end for my gen one motor. So, you know, I hope uh, this helps you guys. If you guys have had any, any issues like this, post in the comment section, let me know your thoughts. If you're new here, consider subscribing and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.